Carla with Carla K Art and welcome to my art studio. I'm an artist that specializes in hand painted silk. Today I'm working on 12 mummy which refers to the weight, the thickness. Um, so I'm working on a pre-hemmed piece of silk. It's cut to the dimensions of 14 inches by 72 inches. I am doing what I call a simpler design and um, pink and red hearts on a black background. Um, even though it's simple, there is a large background to cover, and in order to get that all one color, there are some tricks of the trade that you need to apply in order to make it so that there are no um, variances in the color, and I'll talk about that in the body of the video. When I'm silk painting, I start off with resist. So here I am pouring some of the resist I got in the larger container into the applicator. This is Jacquard Permanent Resist. Um, it's made by a company named Rupert Gibbon and & Spider, and I purchased it from Dharma Trading Company. Um, I also got the applicator tube and the applicator tip from Dharma Trading Company, but the applicator tip is actually a mechanical pencil top, so if you have a mechanical pencil top, um, extra one lying around, you can use one of those as well. The size that I'm using for this is a 0.7. Um, I like to use a larger size, but you can um, use a 0.5 or a 0.3 if you prefer. The 0.7 size is easily cleared um, by using a sewing pin if it should ever get clogged, so I like that convenience. And I vary the size of my line by adjusting the pressure I use to squeeze the resist out. And the resist works like a fence to keep the um, dyes from spreading and enables you to put two colors next to each other. You wanna make sure you apply the resist so it sinks through the fabric all the way. So you see me here checking the fabric to make sure the resist has gone all the way through and so you can see it on both sides of the fabric. Next, I'm applying the dyes for this. Um, I'm using Tinfix dyes here, but Tinfix has been discontinued, um, and I am slowly switching over to um, DuPont and to Jacquard Red Label. Um, I am mixing two different colors of the Tinfix dyes that I have left here. I'm mixing a fuchsia and a, a carmine red color, kind of a fire engine red color together. Um, and I apply those dyes in concentration next to the center heart there. And then I just use water. Um, mind you, I am on a well, so my, my water doesn't have any chemicals in it, to dilute the dyes out to be that pink color. And so here I am applying the dark dye next to the center heart and then using water to dilute it out to the other edge of the heart. And um, as I said in the intro, this is a simpler design that I've done, um, one of the simpler designs that I do. Um, and it really just focuses on blending dyes versus um, the actual design itself. Um, the design is fairly simple, um, just hearts within hearts. And um, there you have it. So I'm just really working on blending the dyes and focusing on how my lines go and how my lines reflect the shape of the heart. Um, and um, the paintbrush lines themselves um, will stay in the fabric. So you have to be careful about how you apply water and how you use your paintbrush. Um, you'll notice I'm using um, motions that are straight down the heart um, pretty much each time except when I'm doing the rounded curves on the edges um, and I'm doing it darker um, to show that those two outside hearts are underneath that center heart so for the center heart I did it darkest down the center and lighter over the other two hearts because the lighter colors look like they're on top um, make the center heart look like it's on top of the other two hearts because um, dark colors recede. Light colors come forward in a picture and dark colors go backwards in a picture. So here I am shading out that center heart. Um, and then in a second here, I'm going to be working on the last heart with little trailing hearts around it on the other end of this scarf. And then I'm gonna get to the background. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about the background now, even though I'm working on the foreground on these hearts, um, because there's a bit to say first. When you're working on a large area of silk, um, if the silk is allowed to dry anywhere before 
the whole entire area is wet, it will recreate lines in the silk. And sometimes you want that. That can be really used as a design technique um, to create kind of a layered look um, on your piece. But if you do not want to have those lines, like if you want to have the background be all one color, you have to work kind of fast and or you have to draw a design that allows you to rest um, so that you have a, a, a resist line going through that gives you a break so you can have a sip of your coffee. Um, but the way this particular background has been designed by me, you have to keep it all wet and you have to move through it. So sometimes like even when you see me drawing these hearts, I seem to be moving kind of fast. Um, I normally may not want to, might not want to paint that fast, but I have to give in the shape because I need to um, finish the entire shape before any parts of it dries or I will get those lines. And in this particular piece, I didn't want those lines, so I had to work kind of quick. Um, the paintbrush I'm using is a watercolor paintbrush. It's by Grumbacher. It's a size 12 round. Um, it's one of my favorite sizes, one of my favorite paintbrushes. Um, working with dyes is very similar to working with watercolors. Um, these Grumbacher paintbrushes are really nice. They last a really long time if you take care of them. So here I am starting the background and um, I'm using um, black tin fixed dye. It's kind of a Mars black, um, although it is a dye, not a paint. And I'm using a sponge brush to apply it. The sponge brush is about an inch um, across. Um, you, um, the dye spreads a little bit, so you can get up like within mm, a quarter of an inch of any of the black resist lines, and the dye will generally spread up to the edge of the shape, so you don't have to get right next to the shape, so it's pretty easy to fill in the background with a sponge brush. You see me here concentrating a bit on the edges, and that's because this particular scarf is a pre-hemmed scarf, so it actually has um, rolled edges on the side, so there's silk that's been rolled over, and I need to um, pay a little extra attention as I go through and do this piece on the edges because I want to make sure the die sinks all the way through that roll of silk. The silk has actually got safety pins holding it onto the frame here and I've put the safety pins through the rolled hem where the um, seamstress who stitched the hem because they are done by hand that's why they're called a hand rolled hem um, has actually stitched through it um, with a needle so I'm using those same holes because I don't want to create any any unnecessary holes in the silk that I don't have to and there is my mistake so you get to see me fix this mistake here in a second um, I initially thought that I would just draw a heart with the resist and I start to go at it but then I pause and hesitate and I'm really glad I hesitated because um, I came up with a much better solution as you'll see here in a couple of minutes Oftentimes when you make a mistake like this, when you're hand painting silk, you kind of panic and your um, first instinct is to erase and you can't erase when you're working with dyes. Dyes are set. Um, there is no white paint. As you've seen here, I have to add water to um, a color in order to make it lighter and I can never take away a dye once it's been placed down. So when you're working with dyes, generally speaking, you work light to dark. Um, so here in a second, I'm going to go ahead and um, blend some of this back black dye in. Um, and it really came out kind of cleverly. I, um, it actually makes the two side hearts look like they're even further behind the center heart. And it added a bit more depth to the color because um, the color kind of looked like candy hearts. Um, it was so bright, bright pink and red. And I wasn't really enjoying that. I thought that for people to look at it, they would want to see it a little bit darker. Here I am wiping some of the dye off. I had debated whether or not I should rub it at all because sometimes rubbing pushes the dye in further but there was quite a bit of dye because it came off that sponge brush which carries quite a bit of dye on it so then um, I added some water to kind of to lighten it up a little bit and to move some of that black dye that was resting on the fibers around and I added a little bit of red dye to kind of further dilute it um, and then I went in with some black I actually purposely put black in there right next to the edge and remember that dyes dry about two to three shades lighter than they do when they're wet. So even though that looks really dark black, it's actually gonna fade out to be um, a, kind of a muted red color. It turns out to be really nice. Um, and then, because I don't want the scarf to be unbalanced, 
um, because these three hearts are right there together, I added black to the other side as well. And the end result is really nice. When we get to the end of this video, um, I'll show a picture of the scarf hanging on a mannequin because I put this in my Etsy store. And um, it turned out really nice. I'm really glad that this mistake happened. And that's the way it usually is for me. When mistakes like this happen, um, usually it's to the benefit of the piece. Um, very rarely do I have a mistake happen that I feel the need to um, not use the piece as a scarf. I'm almost always able to fix the mistake. That doesn't mean that I want mistakes to happen, but um, I kind of listen to um, what the universe is telling me if you if you kind of get my drift. And I always try and fix the, the mistakes that happen because usually like it did in this case, it turned out to my benefit to have that black tone in there. So here I am, so you now you've seen I've been keeping this edge here. It hasn't been being kept wet because I was intent on fixing the hearts before they got dry. So I had to work really quickly to get that area wet and keep moving on so I didn't get any stripes on my silk in the black areas. Um, and I just continue on down and finished out the piece. Um, in this particular piece, because the way the hearts were arranged, I had to change the angle of my brush a few times and you can see it. Um, on the silk here when it's wet, you can see how sometimes I went in an angle and sometimes I went back and forth. It turned out absolutely perfect in the end. Here is the final piece um, as it was put on a mannequin and I took a photo to put into my Etsy store. And next you're gonna see the piece up close so you can see um, how that all turned out. And it is just lovely. It's a lovely piece. The silk is kind of transparent. The black um, background is all consistent. It's just beautiful. Hi everyone, thanks for watching my video of red and pink hearts on the black background. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button below. If you want to be notified when I put out new videos, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost to subscribe. It just allows you to get notifications about when I put out new videos. And if you hit the down arrow, you will get links to me and my, myself and my business, including links to my website. And if you're interested in purchasing anything, you can go to the right hand column of my website and see where you can purchase originals, hint on Etsy, or from me directly, um, and or prints, and the hint there is Fine Art America or Shop Vita. Um, until next time, I will see you in the art studio. Bye!